evening, everybody. It's an absolute privilege to be here, especially in Wellam Boys, which has been at the forefront of the Wellam Initiative. I am going to start by talking about, giving give you a little bit of a background about myself, because a lot of that has now translated into what we are trying to do in this alternate education business. I was born into an army family. My father was from the Rajput Regiment. He retired as a major general. He fought the 71 war. He was, he was there in 1962. I was born in Dehradun in the Doon Hospital, which is probably some 3,000 steps from here. And uh, I did all my initial schooling in Dehradun. I was in St. Joseph's Academy. I, was, uh, I studied for a year in Marshalls. One year, my father went to the went to Fort Benning, so I started in the U.S. I then came back and joined the Doon School. After the Doon School, I went to Madras Christian College. And I think that actually changed my life. Because I was now exposed to two different parts of the country in a manner which was absolutely breathtaking. Suddenly, I had Malayalis and Tamils and what we used to call Golti, so basically Telugu's, as my classmates and my roommates and we were all living together and I found this country was much larger than what we had all been exposed to sitting here. In fact, had I landed up in uh, Delhi University, I would have probably found the room school lot from here and landed up there. So I, I really considered that to be a major turning point in my life. After I passed out of uh, Madras Christian College, I was wondering what to do. And uh, I was, everybody, I used to be called Fauji in room school. Everybody has said that I get to fall by the In fact, I probably had the shortest ever career counseling session in, in school because my house counselor looked at me and said, Oh, you're joining the army next. So that was it. And my father was very clear. He said, Either join the army or go to hell. So hell was the option I actually landed up with. Now, after I came out of MCC, I joined uh, Times of India for a very short time. I thought, I used to write well. I had. Uh, I had been the chief editor of a school magazine and even in college I had done well. So I thought, okay, let's try journalism. Again, my dad said to me one day, he said, you want to write, but how can you write about anything if you really don't know anything about? And somewhere along the line, I decided that, look, I'm going to try and work with the armed forces. And the other big passion in my life was my life. I got a fantastic break after that. I landed up with a company called Tiger Tops in Nepal, which was wanting to open trekking routes in Ladakh. And that became, I spent three years there, and let me tell you, it was, in those three years you probably lived more than a lot of people live in their entire life, because we were opening up new routes. Ladakh was a, was an absolute, you know, distant entity. And to add to the experience, my father was commanding a brigade there. I used Zoravar Singh's maps to open up routes across Zojila and stuff like that. We used to walk for 25 days carrying something like 20 to 30 kilos of equipment with Sherpas and dealing with them and marking routes, water points, this, that, etc. And it was a fantastic experience. But there's a limit to how much you can do that. And one of the reasons I put on a lot of weight is because the sheer magnitude, the sheer intensity of the physical workout at that time, you just can't match it now, no matter what you do. So after I came back from, uh, I, I left Tiger Tops in 1983, and I was very fortunate, I literally walked into India today, and a lot of people say that I'm the first wildlife journalist to have actually joined them. I did a lot of stories which were dealing with Project Tiger, or dealing with the Sundarbans man-eating stuff, we did a couple of stories on man-eating wolves, but basically, it's, it's, it created the ground for uh, really getting to understand and educate myself on what the environmental issues in this country were. India Today led to Associated Press, and again, uh, I was very fortunate. I got to cover Punjab, I got to cover Blue Star, I got to cover the Bhopal gas tragedy. In fact, we were the first guys to actually walk in when that happened. And, uh, but I was very clear, I was a little fed up of the whole thing because, you know, you saw a lot of violence, you saw a lot of death, you saw a lot of stuff which was, as a 24 year old, it actually shakes you up. And then I got another, you know, it's, it's serendipity or whatever, 
Bittu Segal, who was the editor of Sanctuary magazine, who had been asked by, he had managed to get some money from Hindustan Divas. And uh, they wanted to do a series of films on Project Tiger. So he came to Delhi and he said to me, he said, look, Kunal, why don't you join us? Because by that time, I made a bit of a name for myself, writing on wildlife. And I was only too happy to take the plunge. So I was brought in to direct Project Tiger. And that time, Project Tiger, we had 16 reserves. Today it's close to 40. And I was asked to direct the films, not shoot them. But after a while, we found, after the first film itself, we found that the cameramen from Bombay who were being hired for this job didn't have the anticipation, they didn't understand the subject. So basically, I started shooting myself. And out of the 16 films, I shot uh, 13 of them. The other three were shot by Brijinder Singh, who shot the Gobet film, Ron Whitaker, and uh, one Mick Thamba shot the Ranthambo film, and whereas the rest of it was all done by me. Now, after that, we, uh, my wife and I, Dindi, was, he was from the Film Institute. She teamed up with me and we were very clear. We said, look, the next step has got to be, let's try and do something for the armed forces. And we shot a few films, or we did another whole series of wildlife films, etc. But all the time I was working towards wanting to put something out, because the armed forces at that time was being projected in films with, you know, the Colonel Saab with the shotgun wanting to shoot the girl who's the guy who was after his daughter and he'd come with his tweed cap and go bang bang with a shotgun. And that was about it. There was nothing else. And then in 1992, we got a huge break when J.R.D. Tata uh, agreed to fund a film on the history of the Air Force. Now that actually changed my life yet again. And I was trained by the Air Force. I got to fly in Mirages, I got to fly in Jaguars, I got to fly in MiGs. And we made this film called Salt of the Earth. It was a benchmark film. It was actually screened between the English and the Hindi news, which was never done in those days on Doodarshan. And because the film was slightly longer than an hour, the, the, the uh, daily Doodarshan said, please cut the film by 34, 40 seconds. And you know, being young, you can be sometimes pretty arrogant, but there's no way if you're going to cut even 30 seconds, I'm not giving you the film. So for the first time, India's whole clocks used to be timed by the English and the Hindi news, but that day we actually ran the film for 30 seconds extra, so the, the clock was not there. Anyway, after that, I shot the history of the Navy, I shot the Kargil War, I worked with the Army, it all started snowballing. And after the Kargil War, I got to make two films which are really close to my heart. Uh, one was on the National Defense Academy called The Standard Bearers. Which I'm very happy to say is even today uh, considered to be a capital classic. And the other one was making up a warrior for the Indian Military Academy. We also were shooting various other films. I got to fly with the night combat aircraft. I got to do all kinds of things. I eventually flew with the Surya Kirans. It was, it was fabulous. But we were still working towards something different. And that's around the time I started veering off a little bit from films toward fighting. And our first book got published, which was Aerial India, India from the Air, which was published by Roly Books. Well, those were basically photographs. And then I wrote this book called The Long Road to Siachen. The Long Road to Siachen, contrary to its name, actually is more of a geopolitical thing, uh, book. It's not so much about Siachen. And I think I got one of my finest compliments ever, because Mr. Gurdjian Singh, who taught me in the Rune School Geography, he called me and he said, he said, Fudgy, that's a very good book you have written. But, you know, it will only become famous after you die. So I said, sir, thank you very much. We'll have to wait and see what happens after that. And then, you know, things continued to move. And finally, in 2009, yet another one of those twists of fate took place. Uh, General Lumba was that time commanding three corps. And we were between projects, we were, I was between books. And he came and he said, you know, I want you to do a coffee table book on three corps. So I said, sir, I'm not doing it. So he said, why? So I said, sir, they go. Coffee table books are a waste of time. You know, all that happens when you put together something, you're going to be the corps commander, you'll say, put my army commander's wife, put, put my army commander, tomorrow you'll get posted out, that book's going to land up in the bill. So I'm not going to do it. So he said, look, I've flown all the way from Nagaland and I want you to do this. So I said, sir, let's do one thing. Let's focus on the people. 
Let's go after the region. Three core was that time Nagaland, Manipur, Miloram, Tripura, and parts of Arunachal. So as I said, if you give me the permission and the support to actually focus on the region and the people, it will be an interesting book to do. So he said, done. That, that's where the Northeast Trilogy was born. Because once that idea got going, then General Vika Singh was the Eastern Army Commander. We had a meeting with him. I said, sir, let's take this even further. Let's take the whole region. And let's change this format because the large size format is not good. So we went for the 9 by 6 format and we did over the next five years. We, we shot and produced the Northeast Trilogy, which is 2,300 photographs over three volumes. Each photograph was taken. And we got something like 800 hours of helicopter support. It was fabulous because we could actually visit every village in the Northeast and document it. Now, I wanted to use the Northeast Trilogy as a major platform for alternate education. We're calling it alternate education for the lack of any other name at present. But we wanted to expand it even further. So we had to spoke to the previous government and they said, yes, it's a very good idea, but things didn't get off the ground for various reasons. Now, my 1962 book came out in 2016, The War That Wasn't. And yet again, you know, one of those strange twists of fate, I was asked to go and speak to some schools. And I went and spoke to the Goika School in Delhi. And the response that I got on that book really got me thinking. So I said, look, here is something that needs to be done. We have to get military history into school. So I was looking around, I was wondering what to do, and then I went and spoke to Mr. Darshan Singh, and you know, the whole concept was born, and I'm, you know, eventually Venom Boys became the standard bearers as far as this was concerned. I started coming here, lecturing them over, every month I would come, regardless of which part of the world I was in, I made it a point. If we had a, if we had a deadline here, this was primary. It had to be honored no matter what. I don't think we canceled even once. Now we felt that we now need to take it even further. So we held the first military seminar, history seminar, in Wellam Boys in 2017. We got General V.K. Singh, who was the Minister of External Affairs at that time, to come and inaugurate it. We had people like Bana Singh, who was the PVC, we had Barkhadad come in, we had a host of generals, including General Mohinder Puri, who had commanded 8th Division, Brigadier Devinder Singh from 70th Brigade. People came in, and we had, I think, 28 or 29 schools last year. And their response was absolutely electrifying. In fact, I was, it was wonderful to see. Everybody was walking on air at the end of those two days. And this year, when we repeated the whole exercise, the second uh, seminar was held, we had 39 schools. And they came from Varanasi, they came from Srinagar, they came from Chhattisgarh, uh, uh, I mean, not Chhattisgarh, no, 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 they came from various parts of the country, including Ranchi and uh, you name it. It was very, very satisfying to do something. But now what we are wanting to do is to take it yet another level. We are also working on a South India trilogy. In fact, the Tamil Nadu book is already out. It has uh, been very well received. It was released on the 20th of uh, June this year. The second edition is, the second volume is going to be on Kerala and the third one will be on Karnataka. In addition to this, we are working on a four part. So it doesn't really qualify as a trilogy. We are working on a four part thing on Indian wildlife where we got volume 1 is north and the east, volume 2 is central and west, volume 3 is south India, and volume three, 4 is going to be the islands. Then we have got another book coming up on the trans Himalayan region, which was part of our northern trilogy, but we ran out of money. And we are doing the illustrated history book, which is going to be the bedrock of what uh, we are trying to do as far as the weather's initiative is concerned, which is take Indian military history to schools. Now we are putting all this together, we are working very hard on it and it's actually emerging beautiful. In fact, sometimes I just sit back and watch what we are doing. It's going to take a long time. It's not something which is going to get done overnight. Today, a lot of platforms are being created by a lot of agencies who are wanting to put out information. They, you know, there's, there's all kinds of things happening. But software, the real material is actually missing. And that is what we are hoping to create and put it down in a systematic sort of a way, use some of the public schools which have been working with us, including Wellams, maybe Doon, maybe uh, Mayo, maybe the Lawrence schools, the schools which, are, which have been standard bearers in their own way, and 
we plan to evolve a system, and we are working on that as well, which is actually based on the old New Provide and Bara Award, you know, where you, you, you distribute these books, you get the students to put up papers to you, you evaluate them, and you give them either a bronze or a silver or a gold, whatever it is. Because when we do this, we are actually going to be pushing the envelope. We are going to be asking them to look further than what they are doing in their curriculums. And I think it's going to literally make a tremendous difference. In fact, I'm hopeful that it will change the face of this country eventually. Thank you very much.